I've made another random buy guys another old car that I shouldn't have anywhere near the lot it is a 52 plate Honda Civic so you might think why on earth would you go anywhere near this car at this age especially when someone has painted the rear arch there really badly I think the other side they've had a go as well we've got uh, quite a bit of scraping down the side going on down the side here actually yeah we've got some bad paint there as well so you'd only really get one of these at this age if it was an absolute minter wouldn't you well there is a reason that i purchased it other than the fact i'm just a natural by anything it's because this car is one owner from new with 60,000 miles and has an absolutely full service history despite the exterior being i mean i guess other than those two rear corners the rest of it's really good actually the front end of the car and the sides are really good it's only those two corners at the back really but yeah other than that inside the thing is in really really good condition really good condition seats or as you'd expect pretty much unmarked front and rear we got a little bit of dog hair on because I did actually take Bella to the vets in this. I used it for a couple of days. It drove really, really nicely. I have to admit, I am a big fan of the gear lever up here on the dash. I don't know why they didn't continue to do that with cars. It gives you a bit more room down here. And it's just a bit of a nicer change. But yeah, we've got genuine plastic wood. All the uh, door cards are in good condition. Yeah, it's all got the wear you'd expect for just 60,000 miles on the Honda. None of the buttons are worked through. We've got a CD radio, proper old school looking one there. We have got air con. Let's start her up for you. Two original Honda keys. And one of them's even got, like someone can tell me, a little rubber cover in it. I don't know if it came like that from Honda or whether they've done that themselves. Down here we've got your Honda book with all your handbooks. And this is the thing that blew me away is the service history. Pretty sure it's a hundred percent full this one uh 2003 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 uh 17 18 19 20 so we might get a missed covid year uh, but we didn't 21 22 23 100 percent full service history on a 52 plate car. So I think a few of you out there would have to admit that if you were offered this car um, with this mileage, that history one owner from you, even with a bit of paint on the back, there's the original supply and dealer. Is that the same number plates as well? Howard's, yeah. Yeah, you'd uh, obviously, like I said, Bella's got a little bit of hair in the back there. But uh, yeah, I think if you were offered this, you'd have to grab it, wouldn't you? How often do you come across cars like this? Now, the only problem is short MOT and previous advisories for uh, underbody corrosion. So we're gonna have to find out what it needs. We could be well into a bit of welding underneath this. The question is, should I be MOTing it at all or should I just be selling it on to some Honda perv somewhere <laughs> who uh, wants to just do it as a little project themselves? Because obviously once I've put an MOT on it and done all that work, then I've got to make retail margin on it. And I don't know if that, this is the car to do that on or not. Comment down below, please don't say it make a good raffle car. We've got raffle cars. That's a good excuse to buy any number of cars. And we've got them coming out of our ears already. As I said, I'm pretty sure it's not going to go through an MOT straight away. It's a safe bet. It's going to need to have a decent amount of money spent on it, I would have thought. But what is also a safe bet is our long-term sponsor of Chops Garage, Surfshark. Surfshark provides you with a VPN, a virtual private network. That VPN gives you a secure internet connection whilst you're online, protecting you and your data. In addition to that, it allows you to access geolock content when on streaming services. Now, as nice as it is being protected online by Surfshark, I have to admit my favorite feature of Surfshark is its ability to allow me to access geolocked content. By that, what I mean is movies, TV series that are available on a streaming service in one country but aren't available in another. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here we are on Netflix, and I've had a movie recommended to me that I want to watch called The Nice Guys. 
So if I put that in, do a search for it, nothing comes back because that movie is not available to me in the UK on Netflix. Not a problem with my Surfshark account. If I go up here and go to my VPN connection, my virtual private network, I can choose to change my virtual private network from a UK connection to a US connection. So there we go. Quick change over there. So I'm now showing as being in the US. If I refresh the page with the same search, you'll see bang, the movie The Nice Guys is now available to me. So as usual, Surfshark have given Chops Garage viewers a special offer. You can secure your privacy with Surfshark now by entering the coupon code CHOPS for an extra three months free at the website address shown on the screen now. You'll also find a link in the video description down below. I want to take this opportunity to thank Surfshark for being a continued sponsor of Chops Garage. Now you may have noticed as I'm wandering around that I've also made another slightly different purchase and that is this Mercedes A-Class. I say slightly different because for one, I've never had one before and secondly, the colour is definitely going to divide opinion. There's going to be people all over the comments, no doubt. This is the 180D, so it's a 1.5 diesel. I think it's a 2017, isn't it? With about 70,000 miles on, we'll confirm in a minute. Drives really, really nicely. Needs a few little bits of paint here and there. So obviously it looks like it's had a bit of paint on that corner quarter before because that's slightly out I'd say there. Might benefit from a bit of a machine polish. There's that little bit on the arch there and I think there was a little ding on the arch down here. Just there. And I think there was a scratch on the bonnet as well that needed doing. Alloys could probably benefit from a refurb. Which is not good because we know how long it takes me to get around to doing alloys. Yeah there's a little bit of lack of peeling on some of the edges there might look better comment down below if we sprayed these completely black rather than left silver on them to go against the gold color but yeah with those little bits of paint it's in it's in nice condition like i say drives really really well no problem at all on that side of things inside's in good condition we've got leather nice lcd screen up there Oh, this, all the condition of the uh, door cards and that are in good condition as well. You've got a nice white bit of stitch around the edge to break everything up a bit. You'll find out what the exact mileage was again on this one. Uh, 73,000 miles. 73,000 miles. We've left it cold. It's been sitting here all weekend. Now, is this keyless? I think it is keyless, isn't it? Because we've got a big start button down there. Let's have a look. Let's see what cold start is like. Why is it not focusing? Yeah, cold start's absolutely fine. No warning lights on the dashboard other than the stop start, but then it has been sitting for a while, so probably the battery's a bit low. I did notice that it was saying it needed a memory card for the nav. Am I doing the wrong thing here? Am I supposed to be... Oh yeah, sorry, it's not a touch screen. So let's get out of that. How do we go back? Back, there we go. For the nav, it said it needed a card. Now, it seems strange someone would take the card out. I wonder if it was a optional extra you had to pay for or not. Because sometimes they spec, that, spec them out with everything, don't they? And then they, uh, yeah, no memory card. Um, yeah, I've got Bluetooth. Aircon or well, climate control, isn't it? I think it is. Six speed gearbox. Yeah, it's all nice here. History wise, they tell me that it's all on the Mercedes system, that you don't have a, a service book with these. Now, the issue with that is, is if you contact Mercedes as a new owner, they can give you the information, but I don't know as a dealer with a log book not in my name whether they're going to allow me to do that. If anybody watching works for Mercedes or knows someone who works for Mercedes, you might be able to get me the service history for this. Because it was a business owner, and I believe they did, you know, they did tell them that they regularly got it serviced. I've got all the receipts of stuff for tyres and all the non-servicing stuff that they had done elsewhere. Um, but they said they got it serviced at Mercedes, so yeah, need to track that down really. But it, yeah, all seems in nice condition. Runs well enough. Got all round electric windows, electric mirrors. Yeah, any, any of you watching own one of these? Let me know what you th 
what you think of it, the 1.5 diesel. That's the reg, by the way, in case anybody does does um, know anybody works for Mercedes. So what do we think? Is this one for me to retail or is this one for me to trade out? I guess it would sit quite nicely in a forecourt with a lot of other stuff. Like this. I don't know if it sits so well with my stuff. Let me know your opinions as always. Now another less strange purchase for me. If you watch the channel, you know I love a bit of Hyundai. And here we've got a i30 Estate, which is always good news in a nice non-offensive white, not a bright gold. This is another subscriber buy, so massive thanks. I didn't get permission to use the name, did I? So I won't say the name. Massive thanks for thinking of me when you were looking to sell this. 62 play, I think it's around about 70,000 miles. Just put a brand new advisory free MOT on it and just serviced it. Spec is really nice. Uh, what is it, is it an SE or something? This one I can't remember offhand now. But we've got all round electric windows, electric mirrors, auto fold, tinted glass, alloys, everything's color coded. All the seats are in good condition. We've got cruise control, Bluetooth, electronic handbrake, parking sensors, which are playing up a bit. I need to get those checked out. I think we have a, might have a duff sensor on the parking sensors, possibly. Uh, we've got, I think we've got sat nav and everything else on this one as well. Let me get the keys for it a sec. Yeah, uh, let's have a look, see. What's the exact mileage? Smells lovely in here as well. I think you give it a good valet before they brought it over. 77,000 miles. And we've got our CD radio. Have we got nav? Yeah, I agree. How do I agree to that? Uh, oh, it's touch screen. There we go. Better than the Merc one, isn't it? Look. Oh, that's why it smells. We've got that up there. So yeah, we've got the sat nav. What's up there? USB and auxiliary input. Really nice condition, really nice condition. No wear on the plastics here, people getting in and out and things like that. Obviously, I'm a big fan of these 1.7 chain driven diesels as well. I find them really reliable. They give you plenty of punch and they also um, give you really good fuel economy. Huge boot. It's got these sectional bits in it as well later hide little bits and bobs away yeah really nice condition i just noticed we missed the parcel shelf though that's a bit of a bummer missing parcel shelf i'll have to see if i can track one of those down mind you i guess with the tinted glass it's not so bad because you can't see in anyway yeah really nice car really nice car so yeah other than like i say get the uh parking sensors checked out on it Get the boys just to have a little look over it. I think we should be good to go now. Hopefully it'll just be a, a sensor, nothing too major. As always, massive shout out and thanks to everyone that uh, messages me and offers me their vehicles. When you can bring them down like this subscriber did, it obviously allows me to do you a bit of a better price because I don't have to allow for transportation. But that is a prime bit of stock. So I think, yeah, I think I'd much rather have that than possibly the Mercedes. But then again, I get out of cars a little bit too quickly sometimes, don't I? There's a good possibility the Mercedes. The only thing with the Mercedes as well, I think it's about 10 grand retail, 9,995, which is a bit at the higher end of what I normally do. You'll notice the Fiat 500 is on a space saver because I went to do its final test drive to make sure I was happy with it after the guys did all of the um, advisory work on it that, that was on the previous MOT. It came with loads of MOT but had advisories, so Moors did the advisories. Took it for a little test drive, bang, big pothole, Dented the alloy, so that's down with the uh, Barham engineering who has straightened the wheel out for me. And I've got to get it back down and check. No other damage was done. I was cursing big time on that. Um, what was I saying? I forget. Anyway, yeah, so it's about 10 grand for the Merc, whereas all this other stuff is well under that. So I have updated my website with prices and all of these things as well, but like that the Dacia, the TP, the Fit Doblo, so I've getting some paint done on it. And this our note, they are all up on the site now. 